Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll MMA podcast. I'm your host, Sky. We got Jason in the building, CJ in the building. You already we know. We back. We Stockton, are homie. Stockton. Back, <laughs> you know, Stockton, homie. We, we've hit that point in the year where like the next couple of cards, especially the next couple of pay-per-views, woo, nothing but fire. Uh, just to quickly address, you know, last week, we watched the cards. They, they were good. They were where they were, but... We know why everybody's here. We're here for the pay-per-view. Let's yeah. go ahead and let's just jump right into it. UFC 284, Alexander Volkanovsky taking on Islam Mahashev. I guess I should have said Islam first, but Volkanovsky is pound for pound number one. It doesn't matter. It is what it is. Champ versus champ. And then up under that, mm. we have the interim title, Yair Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett mm. for the 145 belt. Um yeah, let let let's get into it. Let's let's start from the top, right? Because we know that the top is hot. Yeah, let's start from the top. How y'all feeling about Islam versus uh, Volk? Go ahead, Jay. Start it off, brother. Okay, so I, let me ask y'all a question real fast before we get into this. Obviously, this card is being built as pound for pound one against pound for pound two. Do y'all think that this is the pound for pound one versus pound for pound two? Oh, good question. Uh, well, let's take a look at the pound for pound. Men's pound for pound has, it has Volk is one, Islam is two, Leon is three, uh, Kamaro is four, oh, five shit. is Israel. How they um, got Alex up under Israel? Yeah. At six? And that's the thing that's, that the P for uh, pound for pounds, they don't really make sense all the way through. Yeah, that, that don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, they got Charles at eight. Algermain, uh, sorry, Algermain at seven, Brandon Moreno at nine, <laughs> and Yuri at ten. We don't have to go through. Oh, this is the first time in a long time Max Holloway has not been in the top fifteen. I didn't realize that. Um, He's not anyway. in the top fifteen for pound for pound. He. J this is the first week. This is the first week he ain't been in. I might have to make a who's video a, about who's that. A, who's above him? Uh, John Jones at eleven, who has not fought in fucking three years. That's the thing. <laughs> How? Why? What, three what, years. What? Well, 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 Max Holloway can't be on pound for pound after the fucking slave beating he got last time out. Yeah, but, you know, there's no shame in losing to the number one pound for pound. Meanwhile, whoa, 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 Kamaru whoa, whoa, Usman. Whoa, 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 whoa. He didn't lose. He was in like a reenactment of Amistad. What are you talking about? Actually, I mean, it was he, he lost, but it was not a fucking ass beating like he put on Calvin Cater. There's a difference. Let's not get dramatic here. Uh, I don't know about dramatic. that. I don't know. You Let's know, I love Max. He, he voked out on him. Though. <laughs> No, I mean, yeah, Volk won, but there's a clear difference be between how Volk won and how Max Holloway did Calvin Cater. We can agree yeah. to that. Like, like yeah. that's on, just a on, fucking fact. Uh, numbers a... don't lie. <laughs> and especially to drop that far out of the rankings and someone who hasn't <laughs> fought in three years. Like you said, those guys uh, losing to the champ, pound for pound, won, to yeah. fall out of the top 15 is kind of wild. Yeah. Um, Dustin's at 12. Jamal Hill's at 13, Robert Whitaker's at 14, and Davidson's at 15. Um, on a very quick side note, when you said Leon Edwards was number three, I literally spit my water on my laptop. <laughs> like, legit went flying. So you're saying you don't think he deserves that? Leon Edwards? Absolutely yeah. not. Ooh. Um, I, is, hey, I don't, is that even a hot take? <laughs> I mean, just to both of y'all, do you think that Leon Edwards is the number one welterweight in the world? Absolutely not. No. Placeholder. No. Placeholder. Sorry, I didn't mean to sidetrack us, but yeah. No, Oof. but that's a good talk, though, because that's a good talking point. It's like, I mean, he beat, at that time, Kamara was number one, right? Yeah. Hey, man, he knocked his ass out. Put him Sorry. to the shadow realms. Next man up, baby. <laughs> Next man up, baby. Hey, I feel it. It's just, yeah. It's, I don't I don't know if this is the number one and number two, pound for pound. I Islam mean, is so don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to give, like, a lot of shade toward it. But, like, I mean, damn, like, yes, Islam is the champion. But, like, his resume is just not yeah. that great. Let's be honest. Like, he has not fought those dogs, those killers, you know. Uh, I know we kind of talked about it last week about what's the best weight division. You know what I mean? 155 is fucking stupid. And then you yeah. got these guys who can't even get into the top 10, can't even get into the top 15. 
Oof. Yeah, because they got placeholders. They finally got Tony out of there. They finally got Connor out of there. They finally got all these people that's been getting their ass beat out of 155. So, like, they're finally allowing new people to come up. And we'll get into the best division debate. But mm-hmm. you said, is do we think that Alex Volkanovsky... First of all, just looking at the pound for pound, I think it's safe to say that, like, something isn't making sense, at least in my mind. Like, when I'm looking at this pound for pound... I feel like two, three years ago, the pound for pound was filled with like a lot more killers. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just felt like the pound for pound had more weight. Like, I'm looking at this and I'm just like, ah. Mm. Like, everybody on there just kind of feels like, ah. ah." Leon Edwards, number three. Ah. Like, like, we might need to You saying it's just mid. It's just mid. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Like, like maybe we need to start looking at these other organizations and seeing who they got on their pound for pound Ooh. because, I mean, I'm just saying, like, look at this pound for pound. It, so, like, when you look at this, are you like, hey, that's my Avengers team? Like, that's who you're taking with you? <laughs> Wait a so second. Jace was saying Wait that a second. he doesn't that- feel like Islam is should be that high. Where do you think he should be? You know, I'm not 100% sure, and I'm not going to take it away from him, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying if you actually look at his CV, right, where he's been, what he's worked at, who who, who he's gotten to the octagon with, you know, compared to even, like, let's say the short tenure of a Michael fucking Chandler, right? That's good points. Very good points, brother. Because if you think about it, does Bobby Green get you on the list? I love Bobby. Does Drew Dober get you on that list? Does Chris Wade give you on that list? I literally just watched that fight, so that's why I know that name. <laughs> uh, I'm sitting over here like, who? <laughs> he, right. he did a good job. He did a good job. <laughs> good wrestling, but he's like, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Nick Lentz, does that get you on that list? He, he so, made it up there based off of recommendation by Habib Nurmagomedov. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice little recommendation letter was sent in. <laughs> hey, send you to the top, boy. Yeah. Hey, but with mean, Volk, I think Volk does need to be on there. Volk is he's, pound he's for pound number one. Improving. Yeah. He in my opinion, he is pound for pound number one. Um but yeah, so I mean number one versus number two, like the last time this happened was DC uh, versus Daniel Cormier. Uh DC versus DC, Daniel that Cormier. Is Sorry. The same person. <laughs> <laughs> John Jones versus Daniel Cormier. Um now that was a legit Pound for pound, one, one pound for pound, two. You know, I mean, I guess Anderson Silva would have had something to say, but in general, I would say 100% there. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so there's so much to talk about here. Are we going to break down the fight or y'all just want to get into predictions? Let's uh, uh, just get into predictions. You know, yeah. who do you, let's, okay. I Like I always say, I don't predict, I go for who I root for. You know what I'm saying? So who do you want to win, Jace? Um, well, I'm not afraid to give predictions, so I'm going to give predictions. Um, so as y'all know, I've kind of been, you know, teasing and teasing and teasing. But hey, I'm not that type. I put out always. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yesterday, I had an epiphany. You know, as much as I've been hyping about, oh, I think Alexander, I think Alexander, I think Alexander. He's facing Islam motherfucking Maklachev, the Dagestani killer, the protege of, of Habib and his pops that I can't say his name, so I'm not going to butcher it. <laughs> and I'm like, how, how does he beat this guy? Like, there's no way. So, yeah, I'm going to give it to you straight right now. My official prediction is Alexander fucking <laughs> Volkanovski gets the job it. done. Gets the job done. Cocktail, <laughs> wow, boy, run it. Wow, boy. Run it. Let's go. <laughs> I, I knew you was gonna come. I knew you was gonna still say uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. And how does he get it done? I was gonna uh, just about to ask him that. Um, I see it. I see him getting it done, pointing him out, going the distance, Ooh. going the distance. So betters right now bet the over, bet uh, Alexander on the decision points. Mm-hmm. Oh, Scott writing that down. <laughs> I am. I am. I am. You know, hey. you're, you're going Volkanovski points. Uh, I have not been to my words. I've been clear the whole time since this fight has been announced. We need to live in reality. And the reality is we would like Volkanovski to win. 
Uh, he has a style that's better than Islam, which is hard to say because I don't necessarily love Volkanovsky's style or City Kickboxing style at that. It's in, it's incredibly smart. They have fight, high fight IQ, but there's yeah. a lot of dancing, a lot of running, a lot of kicking, in and out, point fighting. That's what they do. They do a whole bunch of fucking point fighting. Um, and there's nothing wrong with it. It preserves their brains, and they're obviously fucking winners, right? Um, so to say that his style is better than Islam is hilarious. But at the same time, um, once he once Islam gets a hold of him, I just believe that Islam Islam dominates him, holds him down, and humps him. Potentially uh, ground him down, yeah. gets him out of there. <laughs> um, on a, a quick side note, I'm actually going to disagree with you. I think Islam has a better style than Volkanovski, right? Because when we think about that. Uh, that that Dagestani wrestling. Think about Habib. Like I loved watching Habib maul people, and not even necessarily how he mauled people, but seeing the people's reactions. Right, the Edson Bar Barbosa face when he went to the corner and realized he has a fucking problem. Um, uh, Poirier, you know, I'll never forget him saying, I, "I can't get this guy fucking off me." Like I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And that is one thing about Habib and Islam. Like they do when they're on the ground, they're not there to lay on top of you like uh, Mark Madsen. They're there to hit you with nasty elbows and try to submit you. Um, and I just don't see. I think it's. I think it's the same thing. Like when going into Charles versus Islam, like there was this cry. I was. I just wanted Charles to win. I just wanted him to get yeah. it done. And as when the fight started, I knew. I knew. Like even before the fight started, my. I knew in my heart that he wasn't going to win, but I just wanted it. And that's that fantasy world that I was living in, that everybody's still living in, where they think Alexander's going to get it done. But here's what I will say. If Alexander Volkanovsky beats Islam Mahashev, actually beats him, not that close second fight between him, like actually beats him, and I'm like, holy shit, he beat Islam. You will never hear me say a disparaging thing about Alex. You will never <laughs> hear me talk bad about him. I I will not. Doesn't matter what he does, the man shits gold at that point. Uh wait a second. You actually didn't give an official prediction and like how the Islam outcome Islam dominates be. third round submission. There you go. Got you. Any particular submission? <laughs> triangle. No, it's not a triangle. Maybe an arm choke. Head and All right, arm. CJ, run it. So my heart, I'm going to vote, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't want Islam to win, plain and motherfucking simple. I don't care. Don't say nothing else. I want Volk to win. You Hot know what I'm take. saying? I don't care. I Hot. don't care. Get Islam out of here. Get Habib out of here. Get all of them out of here. I'm not a Daggy fan at all. Y'all can hate me. I don't care. They're boring. I don't Hot, care. Hot but, take. But, but. I feel like it's going to be a good fight. And what Sky was saying right now, it's true. It's going to be one takedown. He may get up. Two takedowns. He may get up. Three, four, five. It's, it's relentless. They don't stop. They don't quit. They don't, they don't, they just keep going. It's going to be very, very high level. I'm going for Volk, but then I had like a little epiphany. I'm like, damn. Volk is kind of different, too. Like, he's a short king like me. You know what I'm saying? Little bulldog, pit bull, stocky. Balance is amazing. Um, he's relentless as well. You know, he's not going to break. Volk don't break. He's a dog, too. So when they both get in there, like, I'm going for Volk. I'm cheering for Volk. I'm going to be standing up the whole time cheering for Volk. If you lose, I'm I gonna be super sad. Not really, but I'm giving my energy to him to pull it out. That's the kind of type of dude. Is I'm not a predictor and all that. I'm rooting for Volk to win. Guy, we just need somebody who has a little bit more personality and stuff. I like the stories. Has I like. No personality. You don't watch him because you hate him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, I can admit, but I don't like his attitude. Like, because I watch Ariel Hawani's show religiously, twice a week, every all, all, all the episodes, right? And so I've seen him on there. He's always on Ariel's show. I don't like Volkanovski's personality. I guess that you guys are calling it. Yeah, because um, I, I I watch him cook with Izzy. I watch him be chilling with Izzy. I watch him do all those things. I'm like, oh, I kind of I like Izzy, but I, but if I see Volk on there, I absolutely don't watch it. So 
that was going to be one of my questions we could say for later. I don't know if you want to hear it now so you can think about it. My One of my questions was, which one of those fighters that you used to hate now that you now like? That they started to grow on you. Now you like them. Now you want to see them do good. That's Charles one of my Oliveira. questions. Oh. I hate it. I didn't you hate him? Char- I didn't hate Charles. I just didn't think that he deserved Charles. to fight for the title. Like, and this is before the pod. Like, Jason and I would talk, and I'd be like, why the fuck are we giving him a title? I talk so much shit about Charles. I talk so much shit about Kamaru. I hated Kamaru. I cannot, didn't, didn't even know who he was. Did yeah. not care about Kamaru at all. I love Kamaru now. I yeah. love Charles Oliveira. So it can happen. However, I don't see it happening with Alex because I think I'll always have a hole in my heart for mm-hmm. what he did to Max Holloway. But I can give him his respect um, Jason, for sure. Bro. <laughs> but like, I, I'm never gonna, you know, be there. But But here's one thing that I'm noticing that's a trend. People aren't going for Volkanovski because they're diehard fans. Because only those people live in Australia. They're not diehard fans. They just don't want Islam to win. And that is a problem. That's good enough. That's good enough. No, that's a problem. Because (laughs) how come people aren't just like, there's no like people who have a path to victory for Volkanovski. They're just hoping. They're hoping he's going to get it done because they don't like Islam. I disagree with that statement. A path to the victory, I, his, back, his path to victory is clear. So for me personally, I don't think this is going to be a good fight. I think this fight is going to suck. Slow and boring? Fact, no, for the simple fact is one person is going to dominate. Islam mm. is going to grab him and ragdoll him, and there's nothing Volk can do about it. Or Alex is going to point fight the shit out of him and just tap, tap, move, tap, tap, move. And 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 you're gonna see let him get just, to yeah, just diving like your boy fucking uh, Mark Madsen or a Damian Maya trying to 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 get a touch. But I don't think this will be a a back and forth kind of a competitive fight. I really think that one person is just going to impose his will on the other human. Mm. Yeah. Woo. It's gonna be good. I'm gonna tell you right now. Like if Volkanovski beats Islam, when? I'm going. When? I just don't see it happening. But if he does, like it, it'll it'll be amazing. It'll be good for him. But 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 here's even one thing that is still interesting. He still hasn't made it over with the fans. Who Volk? Volk. Um, if he beats Islam, I think it'll give him more of a push because people aren't. Do you guys not? Since this, or do you only sense it because he's fighting Islam? No, well, I you got to look who the people he's fought as well. Mm, facts. So the question I said, he's the person that I did not like before, is because he was fighting my people. He fought mm-hmm. Max three times, my guy. Zombie, my guy. Ortega, my guys. Because my so blood. Aldo, my guys. So it's hard. It's hard. Mendes, you know, he's from the back in the day. So it was hard for me to look at him to be like, I'm going for him when I like those people more. So now that all of that's washed out, I can, and there's somebody I hate more than him, <laughs> I can pull for him. <laughs> but, I, but you know, that's my thing. It's like, I'm not, I don't interact with die hard, single handed Volkanovsky fans. I interact with people who want Volkanovski to win because they don't like Islam. Like, and I know that they're out there. I know that there are people who Alexander Volkanovski is his, is, you know, the favorite, their favorite fighter. But even (coughs) after being on Tough, his uh, following numbers barely went up. He's still not at a million followers on Instagram. He's still not at, you know, I don't even think he's at half a million followers on YouTube. Like his stardom isn't there something's not translating with the people and i know you guys have just talked me up to being a hater and i've already said i don't like him but i really don't care for his personality so cj to answer your question before like Mm -hmm. i mean volkanowski is like right there because i couldn't stand this motherfucker you know but what can i say he's a he's 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 a parasite Right, he's just grown on, me. grown on you, <laughs> you know, um, and and yeah. So for me, it would either be Volkanovski or or I know y'all fucking are gonna hate me saying this, uh-huh. but Kobe, oh. 
It's Kobe. <laughs> Listen, Kobe, his spick, his spiel, you know, which is almost like uh, King Henry, the King of Cringe. Like, it's just grown on me. It's it's intertwined in my soul. And now, like, it's must-see TV. Kobe Covington, love him, hate him, is must-see TV. He's a nerd. Facts. <laughs> Facts. But again, he's exciting. He cuts great promos. You know what I mean? Uh, he gives us material every time he talks, like his favorite president, Trump. Like Every time he speaks, he gives me something to talk about. I mean, cum shot is synonymous Your with this podcast. Your boy hasn't even fought in a year. In a year. He hasn't Tim, fought we gotta in a year. Get he, something up. He's like, talking about on. he's got brain damage, yet he stays at the fucking casinos playing <laughs> poker. Like, he's a fucking chump. Won't hey. fight Hamzad. Won't fight the cum shot that he can fight. But now the rumor in Bilal, like you want to fight Bilal, but you don't want to fight Hamzad. Who's ahead of you? All right, because that smoke is real. The smoke, smoke is about is to get real. real. Or maybe because real. he doesn't want to train and then you know get to fight to one and they come in twelve pounds overweight. I mean, maybe that was a one time. What about Burns though? Burns, he don't want that smoke either, bro. He wants to handpick people, trying to keep it easy. The the, the guy's a joke. Easy. He fought Kamara yes. twice. He fought Robbie Lawler. These everybody coming fights. off. Everybody coming off losses, like Bilal said. Everybody coming off losses. Did when he fought um, Usman was he coming off a loss? Obviously that's the only not. one. Oh, okay. Ob- yeah, that's the only one. And then when he fought Usman again, was he coming off a loss? Of course not. He's the champion. Okay. Okay. I just what, wanted what to make sure. About? I just want to just destroy the narrative that's being no. put out there. The, no, listen, you can't listen. destroy the Here's narrative. The Here's the thing. The truth. You want to talk about someone who no one fucking cares about? Bilal Muhammad. Nobody fucking cares about him. <laughs> he's a boring fighter. He has a boring Doesn't personality. That, he's he tries, actually fighting, though. He's he actually out there out. fighting. He tries to get out. Hey, hey, my man Kobe trying to get this bag. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was viciously and maliciously uh, attacked from behind, God. right? From from behind, you know what Come I mean? Out, Kevin. Also, also some real, some real, some real, real whack shit <laughs> coming up from behind. <laughs> no, you know? he's not. Because listen, when Jorge had the chance to do that one-on-one fade on them real shit, what happened? He got dealt with. And I will go back, go back and watch um Thrill and Agony after the fight. Kobe is the one talking as they're getting ready to say that he won. He's the one, when I catch you outside, it's on site. It's on mm. site. He's the one talking about if I see you in the street, it's on site. That's out of Kobe's mouth. He obviously doesn't know what on site means because he's still inside his little fucking personality bubble. And then the man got caught. Sit the fuck on down. Site. <laughs> Go on site. On fucking site. So all of that, he knows who the fuck Jorge is. He knows who he was messing and with. We he thought all it was know, a fucking game. And we all know who the better fighter is. Next question. Just because you're obviously not. He's got brain damage. Hey, that's what happens and when you get hit tooth. from behind. Hey, How hey, do you hey, get hey. hit from behind and you got a chip tooth? Well, right? Wouldn't you have like... Going uh, forward, this one get on top of you. That's not how his tooth got hit. Well, I'm sorry. Were you there at the steakhouse? My no, dad. But, but there's his little... Uh, what's it called? Uh, his paperwork. Hey, like yeah, I his said, paperwork and his statement. Gonna, it's all on the internet. I'm Anyways, use... enough about Kobe because I hate him. <laughs> I don't even want to hear about him. Until that man actually signs on the dotted line, there's nothing to say about that. He got brain damage. You know, I'd hate I to can't talk wait about for him uh, to get knocked out. God yeah. Damn. He already did. And he got his jaw broke. And then he <laughs> ran know. out like a pussy. Like a straight bitch. Yeah. When did he get knocked out? Uh Kamara Usman, the very first fight. And ran. Don't remember it. Don't remember it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, sure you don't. You're gonna flip so, flopper. <laughs> <laughs> so just so that we're clear, um, you guys are going with Alexander Volkanovsky. I'm no, 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 no. I'm going with Alexander the Great Ooh. Volkanovsky. Okay. Sorry. And I'm the only one going for Islam. We will see. Come back next week. Who won? Who's gonna be eating crow? It could be me. Alex could get it done. Um or it could be y'all. So we'll see. Right up before that fight comes on, Yair Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett for the interim flyweight title. Um, what is it? At least six years? It's like the last six years the title has only like um, 
Max and Volk. Yeah, it has been Max and Volk, really, <laughs> like actual title holders. So now we're going to have a new interim title uh, with Yair and Josh Rodriguez. Y'all can go ahead and just jump right into it. Go on, CJ. Give us your thoughts. Viva Mexico, perro! Yeah. <laughs> I can't switch up. I don't care. <laughs> hey, I don't care. Got ears. Let's go. It's good. I think this is going to be a good scrap, though. I think it's going to be a scrap. I've been going back watching Josh Emmett's fights. The thing with Josh Emmett, though, he throws a lot of his punches from the outside. He's Moving. way outside. He'd be trying to knock people's heads the hell off. Mm-hmm. So, if uh, Yair keeps it down the middle, throwing them strikes down the middle, I think he might catch him. But it's going to be fun. It's going to be a banger. Oh, and this is five rounds, too, huh? Yep. Yeah. It's and let's gonna just be, be honest. Like, who doesn't love a banger? Yes. <laughs> Unless you're in prison. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but that's what they say. Like, surprise sex is the best sex. Unless you're in anyway. prison. Anyway. Oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pulling for y'all here, man. I don't care. What about you, Jace? Um, so y'all know, you know, I've been saying Yair, Yair, Yair. And then, you know, today I had an epiphany. You know, I was thinking, man, this boy Josh Emmett's giving this work, man. You know, where Yair is a super flashy dynamic striker, you know, and Josh Emmett is just a home run hitter. And uh yeah, you know, so that being said, I'm going to officially Change my prediction. Josh Emmett gets it done on a home run swing. A KO. Home run swing. Write that shit down, Scott. Write yeah, right? <laughs> Write it down. Write it down. I have Emmett. a feeling. I had an inclination. K-O. And I can just feel it that Josh Emmett is probably going to be getting touched up, touched up, touched up. And then it's just going to touch him. It's going to touch him and, 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 and baptism. What you got, Any Scott? round? Any round? Shit. Let's go. I'm going to pay homage to my boy, Can I Bus, and go uh, second round KO. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> yes, I, I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shout out to Cannabis. Never folded. Yair Rodriguez has my pick. I think he's just sneaky, dynamic, dynamic. just unpredictable. Um, and that unpredictability makes it hard to know where he's at and what he's going to be throwing next. Um, but Josh does have the power. I think that this fight is going to be better than, than the main event because stylistically it makes sense. I think Josh definitely is going to try and grapple more because Mm. That's the best way to try to stop all this crazy shit that's coming at you. I mean, you know, Max had to start uh, grappling with Yair. Yeah, had to start taking him down. Because it's like, hey, man, like, you hit me with all this crazy shit. I don't know where it's coming (laughs) from. You know what I mean? So um, I think he's definitely going to try. But Yair typically has really good takedown defense. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that he knows that he's fighting somebody who has a wrestler's background. And so I'm pretty sure that he's been working with his wrestling coach, Izzy, um, to like really just sharpen those edges. And I just, I, I think it's going to be the opposite of what Jay said. Like I, I see a KO TKO coming from Yair. What round? I always like to go with third. I don't know. Why. Man, I always, that I always, middle always third. third. Yeah. Man. Cause that's when that gas tank starts falling off a little Facts. bit. You're like, Oh my God, I'm in the war right now. Facts. I think, yeah. I think this might be some fight of the year type shit in this fight right here. It could be. I think it's going to be big and bloody cause. <laughs> uh, cause uh, Emmett gets busted up a lot. Mm-hmm. His face be it already looks crazy and stuff, but he gets busted up a lot. And then your ear throws things from all over the place. It's gonna be fun. I, I'm I'm ex- super excited for this fight because I your ear dynamic. He's the type of fighter I like to see that's just smooth and can throw from all over the place. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited to be right. What about Josh? Oh yeah, and then of course Volk. It would be nice if you were right. I mean, you haven't been getting them right. Remember, you started off the year like, oh, Mr. Undefeated, under <laughs> da, 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 and then you just sloop. I had fell one off. bad day. I had one bad day. What do you mean? I have one, just one bad day. It's still undefeated. Still not so undefeated. Be- before we move on from that, so the winner of this fight will have to fight Volk. To, potentially. Uh, potentially. But so see, that's, how do you think that goes? I think that that's the problem, right? Because you have 
Holloway. Max Holloway has now been, you know, moved into that number one contender spot like Robert Whitaker and um and Kobe, right? Like people who just couldn't get over couldn't, there. Beat, yeah. couldn't beat their champ. But seems to always beat everybody else up under them. Um and so now you have Arnold Allen facing Max coming up in April. Um if Arnold wins that fight, everybody's going to want to see Volk versus Arnold. We're not going to mm. give a fuck about whoever wins this fight because we've already established that Max is, he is number one still on the rankings. And we've already established that like, if you get past him, you deserve the title. So I think having that interim will be good for them. Like, cause it'll secure like that fight to happen, but people aren't going to want to see that because Who's, if Arnold beats Max, then Arnold's going to fight who? Somebody else? Like, no. Once I beat number one, I am number one. Like, mm. But at the same time, he's always getting injured anyways, and he's always like fighting like once a year. So it might work out for him to where he doesn't fight until like the end of the year, mm. and he's fine with that. Um, but if Yair versus uh, Volkanovski or Josh versus Volkanovski, the answer is Volkanovski. I, <laughs> I, I don't see either one of them. Unless Yair catches him with something crazy. I, I don't see anybody at 145 beating Volk. Yeah. That's crazy because yeah, ear is kind of like a worse max if you think about it. Yeah. Like just like speed wise, size wise, and stuff like that. And look what Volk did to Max the last fight. So yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. And one thing that I do no 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 no. I'm gonna save that for a rant. So I'm gonna start doing Tuesday <laughs> two minute rants and Thursday three minute takes. And you guys can now go link in my bio and post any of your MMA takes and I'll bring some of them up and I'll, we'll answer some questions also like here on the podcast from that to make sure that you guys go in and uh, put on that. But I, I've got some other stuff that I want to talk about that I'm not even going to bring up with this that I was going to get into because it's just, yeah, Ooh. it's just too much. What about you, Jace? The mystery. <laughs> so, uh, what about me in reference to um, both, uh, yeah, here and MMA? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a non-starter. Uh, I, I don't really, you know, I don't really want to engage in hyperbole. Uh, who knows? The gun to my head, you know, I think both wax them both. I don't think anyone at 145 except maybe Ilya can beat um, oh, Volkanovski. Good take. Good take. Why are you so high on Ilya Teporia? <sighs> Listen, I, I, I had a dream about this kid. Right, this kid is going to become champ. I'm just going to stop and end it right there. He's a future champ, 100. percent It's funny you say that because I literally just posted his video today on TikTok. Dude, dude is good, and I like his swag too, bro. When he was fighting yeah. with Patty, it was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about someone who doesn't want smoke. Yeah, Patty, who is he? Where is he? Who? Have you heard from him? Who? <laughs> he thinking twice, huh? Hey. <laughs> Yeah, you ain't calling nobody out right now, buddy. He's not saying nothing. Hey. Like they, they, they didn't even like try to like even force him to be. Had he won that fight, I mean, on paper he won, but had he actually won that fight, they would have been trying to really push him to be on that yeah. March card. Um, because even that card versus Kamara, like a lot of the London hitters weren't aren't on there, like you know, like it should be. Um, and then you know, do you guys know who Jack Della Madalena is? Yeah, he got hands. I like him. Yeah. Jack is nasty. Jack is nasty. I'm excited to see him up against rude boy Randy Brown. But guess um, what? I'm going for Randy Brown. Or is it because he's black? <laughs> What's up with it? Be honest. It's because he's black. Like, um, Jack's going to win this fight. <laughs> hey, and it's February, bro. What's up with it, bro? <laughs> oh, Hell no. Nah, no slander. Hey, he said it's Black History Month. We going for it. Um, Sounds good. Yeah, yeah dude, huh? Yeah. yeah. He, about, he about to get pieced the fuck up. Uh, yeah, I, I think Jack's going to get it done, especially yeah. there in Australia. And then, like, I mean, look at this main card. Like, the main card has obviously fallen apart. It was supposed to have uh, Kai Car France on there. It was supposed to have your boy Robert Whitaker on there. And instead, everything has fallen apart. A lot of people from... Um, Australia and even New Zealand haven't had a chance or aren't on the card, whether it's due to injury or whatever's going on. Um, Cause Justin Taffa versus Parker Porter on, this is a pay-per-view. Like this is like, 
that's how you know, like, it, it starts thinning out. Jimmy Crute, I do like Jimmy Crute, and I do like Alonzo Menefield. Let me guess, CJ, you're going with Alonzo? <laughs> you know it. You know it. Um, <laughs> uh, he's tough, though, so. <laughs> no, yeah, he's yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's going to be a good fight. You know, Jimmy Crute, he's coming off, like, didn't he mess up? He, like, rolled his ankle, like, against his Anthony knee. Smith. His, his knee, knee got messed up, yeah. And he had heart. He had heart. I he like, tried to I continue. I like Jimmy Crute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. fuck with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he tried to continue, and then um, I personally just love Tyson Pedro. I've loved Tyson from the very beginning, even though he's been out for four years. But he had two fights last year. He won first round finishes. Um, it'll be interesting to see. And aside from that, we're not gonna go down the whole card. Except we are gonna look at Jamie Malarkey just because. Look at him. <laughs> this man looks. It, it's just a bad day. It's just Jamie Malarkey is just an interesting looking guy. Anyways. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> On a, know, a, on a real quick side note, can you tell me the reaches of Volk and Islam? Volk is 71. Volk Islam is, is 70, I think. So Volk has a 71 and a half inch reach and Islam yeah. has a 70.5. <laughs> Volk has really long sloth arms. Like he had a longer reach than, uh, than Max as well. So he has short legs and long arms. That's Sounds like a wild. recipe for an ass whooping. <laughs> He better throw them things for sure. And, and that's another thing. Like I was talking to somebody like about like the whole Volk thing, and I was like, you know, they credit him at five six. I'm like, I've I've met him. I stand over him. I'm actually five six. That man's five four. Mm. And new pushing pushing and, five four and and new. Yeah, and and so what happens at one fifty five? Let's talk about it really quick. What happens at one fifty five when Islam wins? What's next? Oh man, Benny the Butcher. Benny the you, Butcher. You think Benny can get it done? Uh, he has the skills to do it. You know, I can't play MMA math right now. I feel like yeah. he has the skills to do it. Like we, like I always say, we have to see it happen and see it play out. But I, I do think he has the skills to do it. I don't think he has a chance. You are not going to beat a Dakisani wrestler. But Volkanovski is. Vulcan out? No, no, no. In wrestling, right? Because that's going to be Benny's path to victory. Generally speaking, is grappling. You're not going to out grapple Islam. It's just not going to fucking happen, right? No. For someone to get him out of there is going to be someone like his first and only loss is going to have to put him to fucking sleep. Hit him with that Scott record record starch. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Volkanovski first and only loss TKO knocked out. Uh, also. So, yep. they're matching up. Yep. Yeah, you know, guess these boys ain't going to sleep. Um, someone's yeah. one has to go instead of <laughs> someone's O has to go. Yeah. Oh, and if you guys don't know, next weekend they took Corey Sanhagen versus Cheeto and moved them from the Apex to San Antonio, uh, March 25th, which I'm sad about because I was damn sure going to try to go see them at the Apex. Oh, uh, at the like, Apex. I wanted to see that. I wanted to see Cheeto's little ass with them little kicks and stuff. Um, so, yeah, we got some good up-and-coming beggars. But right now, we're going to go ahead and transition into some questions, some debates, some hot takes. First one up, which division currently do you think is the best division? Uh, how, do you, how, how do you want to define best? Best is in the best talent. Best is in best fighters, best fights. Isn't that all the same? Talent. I mean, fighters. Uh, I fights. mean, yeah and no. I mean, because sometimes you have a, a division that has like such a dominant champion, right? With John Jones mm -hmm. at two hundred five, where literally like, you could care less about the two hundred five because you know what the fuck was going to happen at the top. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Let me tell you how I look at it, right? And of course, everybody's going to look at this differently, right? So for me, it's like, regardless of if you do have a dominant champ, right? When I look at your division, when I'm looking from 1 to 15 and beyond, am I seeing killers in there? Am I seeing high talent? Am I seeing fighters who always come and they're technically good at whatever you know their specialty might be at that's what i'm looking at right so like yeah there's a lot of people that's going to lose to a champion you know what i mean because some champs are that guy but when i'm looking at the full division i'm not like damn like every time i see this division up 
Like, there's nothing but bangers. Every time I see this division, like, these fighters are actually really good. There's depth. I look at depth more than I, when I'm talking about the best division than I do um, at, as far as, like, who's more famous in the b- division, who has a a, um, mm-hmm. a bigger name. Yeah. I agree Fair. with that. So, so, with all that being said, what do you pick, guy? What do you think? Uh, I've been saying it. People give me shit for it all the time. 135. Yeah, I kind of agree with you with that one. I have two, but Mr. Jason's only one, but then he switches it up. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to say my two. I'm going to say just the one, like you said, for Bantamweight. Because my thing is, I think what that is, any one of those dudes could become champ and be long reigning. They can lose and somebody can hop into that space <laughs> and have a successful run at the belt. And maybe lose, and then that person can have a long, successful belt. Somebody at uh, ten who was in there, Adrian Yanez, somewhere right there. Hey, he could uh, be Ricky the champ. Simone, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But their dude is good as hell. Mm-hmm. So it's the the that division is deep, super deep with talent. Um, and then 55, it's a lot of the best dudes for a long time. You know, Dustin's been good for a long time. Gaethje is pretty decent. Benil is decent. Gamrot, he's down in the in the list, but he's real good. Armin Sarukin, he's real good. Um, shit, even guys who aren't super like high up on the list, Drew Dober. Hey, you have a bad day with him, you're gonna go to sleep. Bobby yeah. Green, hey, he starts he styled on Fazeev, and look where mm-hmm. Fazeev's at now. So yeah, I I picked those two. Well, I'm going to answer your question since you said one. Well, he did. He said 135, and then, you know, you yeah. just want to highlight 155, uh, which I'm I just, agree. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say 155. Enough said. I mean, it's no, just killers. Everyone knows. No, it's killers. Everyone knows. I mean, uh, CJ just very eloquently articulated, you know, with that uh, <laughs> well, you, high school uh, <laughs> education. Um, yeah, 155, easy, done. There's just, there's no easy night out. You know what I mean? Like, there's no easy. Last week or, you know, a couple weeks ago when we thought that, like, Jalen Turner was just going to get it done. And I don't know if he's woke up yet. Who fucking knows? Uh, no, Jaylen, couldn't have been Jalen Turner because Jalen Turner is oh, fighting. Um, sorry, yeah, up. he's fighting this week. Um, who's your boy, the black dude? Got knocked out. I can't think of his name now. Who fought that week? Or Bob two Green? weeks ago. Bob Green? Who? Uh, he was on the undercard. Ah, uh, what the fuck? Oh, is his oh name? McKinney, McKinney, McKinney. Oh, Terrence McKinney. Terrence McKinney. There we go. Oh mm-hmm. shit, he was eluding me. I kind of mm-hmm. get those boys confused. You know, those people. They all look we alike. All, it's February. <laughs> we all look the same during yeah. this month, anyway. You feel me? That's our special power. Uh, Facts. So, but so, you're correct. I just don't feel that way about 155. I I don't know why, but like for me, I just think 135 is depth. I just, it goes yeah. outside of the top 15 for me. Like, so even does 55. When you start, who? Do you know who uh, Demir is Magulov? Is Magulov? Is. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. James, I don't even no, he's not in, he retired. Yeah, he's not in the UFC no more. They still got him ranked number 12. Oh, yeah. I mean, because he hey, lost. Hey, JC tried to play first you with a sneaky one. Yeah. Hey, hey. First of all, I know. I'm just I know asking. He, yes, I know he is. You know, I'm, he just it, lost his first fight in the UFC. It was the first time he had lost in like 30 fights or 24 fights. Like, and he quit, right? He retired. And then prior to that, he quit. He and so retired. after that, after that, right, <laughs> earlier in the mid last year when Gamrot and Sarukian fought, Nobody knew who they were. Everybody was talking shit about that card. They were like, who are these guys? Why are they headlining? It's another bad Apex card. Everybody was talking shit. Then they watched the fights and they were like, holy shit. Like, yeah, who are these guys? And all of a sudden, Gamera and Sarukian had a name. And everybody wanted to cheer behind them. My thing is, I feel like because you have people, like you guys said, who have been in the, at 155 for a long time, Dustin Poirier, Michael Chandler, um, Charles Oliveira, you have these big names Mm -hmm. that it has created this legacy based off the fact that they are there. But when I'm really looking at like the full Dan Hooker's number 11, come on, who's number 11? Umar Namagamedov is number 11 at Bantamweight. Yep. And he has a chance to be a champion. And And like now, 
like right yeah. now. <laughs> like yesterday. We we all know that the UFC um inflates their numbers depending on where they're going, right? But I will say, Sky, in my opinion, your point kind of defeats itself, right? Because 155 is so good where you got people who are putting on world-class performances that you don't even know their names because they're that Ooh. good and it's that talent deep. So I think, in my opinion, like, uh, you, you, you kind of, your argument kind of just collapsed on itself. Well, I, the reason why I don't agree with that is because regardless of whether or not I know their name, right? Because Chris Gutierrez, who just knocked out uh, Frankie Edgar, Frankie. nobody knew who Frankie was, you know what I mean? He's still inside there checking people off. Saeed Nurmagomedov, who's number 14 and, and over there, nobody knows, well, they know his name because he's a Nurmagomedov. And even Jack Shore, like this, Jack Shore isn't a name that you know, but you've seen his knockouts before, right? Uh, he's He should have been on this, um, anyways, he should have been on the London card. But anyways, um, for me, like, the talent there, talent wise, I just I just feel like 135 is better. And like even yeah. outside of that, like Adrian Yanez just got in the top 15, Man, which is crazy to me because Adrian is is that guy to me. Like I like I yeah. absolutely love him. Um, and when I look at 155, I see a lot of older guys. I see a lot of guys who they're yeah they're exciting fights, but is there depth? Is there depth? Yes. Next question. You know, agree to disagree. Fair. Nobody's gonna get it right, right? Because somebody's mm-hmm. gonna come in and say, "Ah, oh, middleweight. Oh, what uh, about two hundred five? There's and- no one that says middleweight. So I hear your argument. I think you're wrong, but I I don't think it's it's outlandish, right? It's like you're coming in here and be like, "Yo, like, um, you know, like Max Holloway's the greatest fighter of all time." Like that would just be like a, an outlandish <laughs> comment. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, <laughs> he, he's my favorite fighter of all time. He's my greatest. Favorite fighter and best are two different things. He's my greatest and he's my best. It, it doesn't matter, no, because nobody can argue with me about it because it's an opinion. But please don't take away what Max does. You know that nigga's a dog, bro. Hey, I fuck with Max. Heavy, I just also fuck, fuck with, with my little Max sister. Heavy. He, he just really <laughs> likes bad. to get me riled up. But it's okay because uh, I'm gonna see him on the 25th, and boy, oh boy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I don't I don't want to tell you guys what happened the last time I seen him and he almost went to sleep. Say it, run it. Hey, run hey, it. This, uh, run it. Film it and story. post it on the pod. Film it and put it on the pod. <laughs> don't worry, I I'll, I'll put the pictures up of his eyes rolling in the back of Fuck his head. I'll see it. Here's the here is the 10 second version of the story, right? My sister has been taking jujitsu class. She wanted me show me. She wanted to show me her rear naked choke, which she proceeded to do. Next thing I know, because I'm not a quitter and I'll never fucking tap. I almost went to sleep. You know why? Because I don't fucking tap. Break my arm. Okay, Tony. <laughs> yeah. So tap or you snap, know baby. I actually just watched, uh, I was looking at, somebody was commenting about like, oh, Volk doesn't give up something along those lines and I, and I or that he won't tap. And I said, you want to know what's funny? I just watched GSP choke out Bisping in New York mm-hmm. City. Like, because Bisping didn't tap, but he went to sleep. So mm-hmm. you have two options here. You want to sleep or you want to, you know, you want to tap. It's up to hey, you. It's, it, you already know, like, the worst case scenario. You take a nap. That's the worst case scenario. Take a nap. It's better yeah, than getting starched. Yeah. I've been going down a little GSP. Um, I want to go through his it. thing again. You've been going down on GSP. <laughs> uh, going right? down that road, that road, oh, so watching his fight. CJ. I just spoke to him fighting Johnny Hendricks. Okay. Oof. Or that, that, uh, that, uh, the, not the whole fight, just the, what they called the fight, and I, I rewatched the whole fight because it sounded crazy. And I thought Johnny Hendricks won that fight, man. We don't need really? to go through all of that shit. Yeah, he one hundred percent won that fight. Yeah, I was but, yelling at the TV, crazy, bro. Like, but, what mean, the that, hell? That literally is one of the worst um, judging ever in MMA. Where like Dana White came straight to the press conference mm-hmm. and did one of those. Hey, did mm-hmm. anyone think GSP won that fight? But all that stuff is tainted now because your boy was on the fucking Jamba Juice. So, mm-hmm. yeah, the big rig. Oh, so we we're talking about that uh, question. So, what's the worst division? 
Women's I'll take it. 45. I was about to say, just the men. <laughs> just the men. I was about to say, just the men. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, Amanda's is fighting no. herself. Hey, she's fighting yeah. herself in that division. <laughs> yeah. She's playing with herself, Pops. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey. <laughs> uh, the worst division out of the men's, I would have to go with. I'd have to, I mean, it's really, hard. it's between middleweight and light heavyweight for me. Mm. Um, and if I had to, I would go with light heavyweight. Mm. Yeah. Is it the be... revolving door of the belt? It, it's Bouncing that. around too much? It's, the, it's that and it's the depth. It's yeah. like, well, like when I look at the depth of it, like when I just look at the fighters, <laughs> like nobody there, <laughs> nobody there is... Oh, that like guy. no, yeah, yeah, nobody there is like running through the division. We don't have like multiple fights at uh 205 where I'm like, oh man, that's gonna be a banger. Like, that's good. Like, I want to see this matchup with that matchup. Like, oh, who's gonna be mad? Like, there's not that feeling there for me. It's just kind of like, yeah, they're doing what they're doing. Like, I literally have to look at the list to know who's in light heavyweight. Like, that yeah. I should be able to boom, 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 at least give you the top five. Yeah, I mean, I can't give the top five, but you know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's no feeling there for me. Yeah. What about you? That's what she said. I I was gonna go middle, but there's more stars, especially now since there's Izzy and Alex there, and you got punk ass um, Strickland is in around there. I, much as I hate him, he brings eyes and people want to talk about him. Mm-hmm. So I feel like, and then Glover's gone at two hundred five. There's not really like super superstars there. It's yeah. kind of like the the lunch pail everyday man type of fighter now you know mm. so it's the me, new 125 yeah so it's like the dude that works construction then he comes and he fights as well type of type of dudes yeah. back in the day 205 was the 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 lick it was the shit it was the best fighters there but i i think i'm gonna change mine and go with what she said with 205 right now you kind of yeah. sway me shout out for jamal hill though let's go my guy yeah <laughs> Shout out to the placeholder for sure. Um, <clears throat> hey man, it's February, bro. Are you still tripping? Yeah, I'm not Filipino. I don't know what you want me to say. Well, you I are know. not. You black. Hey, they black too, bro. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say for me, I guess I don't. When I hear this question, it's not even necessarily what I think is the worst division. It's like the division I don't give a fuck about, mm-hmm. which is 125 men. Just get rid of it. Throw it Stop! out the window. Can I? Are you done? Because there's no way you say that if Davidson won. Oh, oh, I take, I take, I take, I take. Say it again, Sky. Hey, he got that one wrong, right? He got that one wrong. He got that one wrong. Yeah. Are you done yet? Viva Mexico, perros. Okay, like I was saying, for me, 125. I just, I don't, I just don't care about the division. Yes, it was cool to see the quadrility, you know, if you want to call it, <laughs> between uh, Izzy and Figueredo. But just overall, like, it doesn't excite me. It doesn't get me up in the morning. Um, you know, I just I could care less. I think that the UFC would be best off just literally getting rid of the entire division, uh, having to move up. Um, and that's my opinion. Yeah. And as in the words of Sky, say, can't argue with me about my opinion. Nope. But it can be, <laughs> hey, but it can be wrong. <laughs> my god, my god. Uh, anyways uh, I what like was the your... 125 though those dudes be so skilled do <laughs> so do I and if you watch uh, Ariel Hawani's show they're better he always bets the under on, on the flyweight divisions and that's what really made me start looking at it more because 9 times out of 10 he's been hitting on just betting the under on any flyweight card so flyweights have been finishing, I think, like, for the longest, like, we were just, like, super dismissive. Because if you remember, Jace, I'm sure you do, like, when I first started watching MMA, I was like, no grown man should be walking around at 125 pounds. Like, I don't want to see these. You know I used to say shit like this. Like, obviously, my, you know, I've watched more MMA. My opinions has changed. But um, but I, I like 125 now. They're quick. They're fast. Bad. And now that yeah. there's some people down there with some power, like, you know. Quick. Um, Fast power, mental note. That's all you need, my guy. <laughs> well, I definitely got uh, the quick part down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the power uh, on a good day. Uh, my, my question is um, involving because you know 
this always rears its ugly head. It happened at the Bellator card where um, Anna Kotkoshkva, I can't say her fucking name. Anyways. Mm. The girl? Yeah. Who is, by the way, fucking gorgeous. Holler at me in my DMs. Um, uh, Sarah, is, uh, a, a Gaba Sheriff or whatever? Yeah, I can't. Okay. You know. <laughs> um, yo, first of all, fans, go check her Instagram out. <laughs> um, secondly, it's just, uh, I'm going to say this now, and some people are going to love it, some people are going to hate it. Um, I want to see same day weigh ins. Just want to see it. I want people to stop cutting weight. Um, what do y'all think is the best? Uh, are, are you for or against someone um, doing a same cut weight day? Same cut, damn! If they cut in the same day, they're gonna be super depleted. I or, think, or they just don't cut. Yeah, you have to fight at your natural weight. Yeah. <clears throat> um. It's uh, yeah. People will have to fight at their natural weight for sure. But even at that, you're going to have people in the beginning who are going to try to cut weight and still compete, and it's going to be bad, you know? Um, I think I think in general, there's really no fixing this because there's always going to be that person that's trying to get whatever kind of advantage it is, you know? And it's like, uh, there's a guy, his name was Jordan Wright. He came in off Contender Series. He had either type 1 or type 2 diabetes, so he wasn't able to cut weight. And he had to fight at his natural weight class at 185. And, like, he's not in the UFC anymore. I should say that. You know what I mean? Like, got pieced apart. And it's like, because when you get inside that 185, these dudes are 215. Like, we seen, you know, uh, Alex Pereira sitting up there 220 going into the fight. Like, Yeah, but there's also a lot of people who really don't cut much of any weight at all. Who? Besides Kobe. Izzy doesn't cut a ton of weight. He mm-hmm. walks around at like two hundred five, though. Oh, I don't, I don't think he's been no, because he bought Yon. He was one ninety, right? Yeah. But he went back up. So when he went, he's put on muscle since when he was gonna go fight Izzy and I mean Alex in that last fight. I, I mean, I don't, I don't believe that to be true personally. Okay. I think Izzy walks around probably about one ninety. I don't think he could get yeah. to two hundred five if he tried. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm just not going to argue about it because none of we us know. Yeah, yeah, we're not on his scale. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's but, just, listen, it's just my opinion. I want to see people cut the same day. Now, yes, there is the the flip side of the coin of the argument because people will still try to cut weight. And now when they're taking that punch, you know what I mean? It's going to be even more powerful, more damage, right? And I get that. But hopefully the majority of people are going to be like, yo, this this is impossible to cut this weight, um, you know, because that's what they do for wrestling, you know, mm-hmm. uh, amateur collegiate. I think you uh, weigh in like an hour before your your, your match, you know, and you, you right. run it. So then it just takes that burden of people trying to kill themselves. And literally people have killed themselves from trying yeah. to cut weight. CJ, but- are you for or against it? Oh, sorry, Scott. Uh I don't think I have a a true opinion about it, you know. I will have to think about that a little bit more. Um, but like I said on another part, I'm not opposed to trying things out, but I'm not mad about how the way things go now. Like you can make the weight, you can make the weight. I'm cool with it. So I don't have a true opinion about that one. I think I think the thing is about like people fighting at their true weight classes is that you're going to end up like boxing 135, 137, 138 and a quarter, like all these weird, weird weight, you know, weight classes that are going through. I think maybe a better solution would be to do 10 pound differences. Like there needs to be a 65. It needs to be 55, 65, 75, 85. You know, it needs to go by tens. Like if it went like that, it'd be a lot. I think it would be a lot more helpful. I don't know why Dana is so against it. I know that he like doesn't want it to be diluted like boxing with so many um, different weight classes, but that I believe would help it because there are people who really need to be at one sixty five and they don't need to be, you know, mm-hmm. at at seventy. With that mm-hmm. in question, where does Kevin Lee fit into this? Well, <laughs> happy you asked because he's back in the UFC. How do you guys feel about it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he was still alive. Fuck. Uh, is he still? When's the last time he's? When's the last time he won a fight? 
Uh, he was fighting in Eagle FC. I don't know if he won over there or not, but <laughs> he was over there. <laughs> I heard that uh, that he thought he was going to be getting paid millions there, but they were paying him. They were paying him like whatever di- a different kind of currency, and so the conversion oh, rubles. over here, I think rubles, rubles. yeah. Yeah, and then like when he came over here, it was like he was like ten dollars. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so he's coming off a win. He beat Diego Sanchez. Okay. Oh, at, 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 at fifty-five. No, at sixty-five. Someone oh, okay. who's actually older than him. That's crazy. Nah, I mean, that's it, nah. It, it's crazy. Like beating Diego Sanchez is not a feat. I'm sorry. Like, I mean, beat, that was like twenty years ago. Yeah, but not in 2022. <laughs> Like Diego. I mean, yeah. what, what I think about it, and maybe here's a question, mm-hmm. and this is not, this is going to make some people upset, right? When you think about Olympic on prom night, right? <laughs> That's Kevin Lee for you, right? You think about this guy who, who talks this big game. So let me ask you guys this who do you think is just the biggest dud, right? I'm talking about someone who literally talks this, like, you know, kind of like um, a, a Luke Rockhold who was just like delusional about their skills. You know, who do you all think is just the most delusional oh, MMA man. fighter? Damn. See, that's, that's hard for me to just speak off the top. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> about their skills. I and mean, then you see him, Sean Strickland probably. Darren Taylor was the first name that popped into my Damn, mind. Damn, you're right. Yeah. He never, he just didn't show and prove. And I don't know if it's us as <clears> fans <throat> who like had all these expectations because he looked so good when he was going up, or if he just really that's his ceiling. This is who he is. Like I, I'm not sure if it's our fault or his fault, but <laughs> for for me, as of about a week and a half ago, it, hands down is Luke Rockhold. Y'all, if you haven't watched that interview with him with Ariel Hawani, me and Sky were talking about this. Like, this dude talking about, oh, man, like, I just, I'm so glad I left the, the UFC now because I get to, I, you know, I was bored. Uh, I get all these new opportunities to really showcase my skills. And I'm just like. What are you talking about? Huh? <laughs> huh? Wait. You bored getting knocked out? Like, I don't understand. The man started off by saying. If my nose didn't get broken the first round, if I wasn't at elevation, mm. I would have beat Ka- Paula Costa. Something else he said that if didn't happen. What? What are you talking about? Your nose did get broke. Like, like, like. It's not like you broke your own nose. <laughs> <laughs> what are you you saying about? you saying he? Can you pull up real fast? When's the last time Luke Rockhold won a fight? Oh, yeah, let's take a look. I'm just so curious because I watch this interview and I'm just like, oh, my, because it's kind of like a Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee talks all this shit. I'm like, nigga. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, He won a fight in 2017 against David Branch, who is no longer in the UFC as well. David Um, Branch is old, too. Like, fought on the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. What year is this? 2017. Okay, so I didn't go to San Diego High School. I got a good education. Um, that's six years. That's six years. Yeah, yeah that's wild. Damn. And this dude just talking like he's just out there ragdolling folk. Yeah, you know, best of luck to him. You know, everybody's trying to get that uh, Tony. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before we wrap it up, before don't, we go. Don't, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. What? You don't want to talk about Jorge Masvidal's boxing card? Oh, okay. I thought you were going to try oh, to talk about El Capui. Before, before we no, go no. there, we yeah. have other news. What yeah. about Connor and Chandler in the in the oh! Ultimate Fighter? <sighs> Yo, yeah, we, we can't go. Not. We can't go. Thank you for we saving the podcast, CJ. Oh, my it's God. It's Black History Month. I'm here all, all month long. <laughs> <Let's> go. <laughs> <laughs> All 28 days. Yeah. <laughs> is it a leap year? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's been a long time since we got a leap year, you know. All right. But um, Michael I'll, Chandler versus. I'll hop. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, hop, I'll, I'll hop into this. You got I, a joke? Sorry, you CJ. have a joke? No, go for it. Hey, you know, my guy, Michael Chandler, got all the little black kids, so he's celebrating Black History Month right now. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, let's <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, let's go. I'm, I'm screaming. 
<laughs> what do you mean? Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's go. Listen, I'm going to tell you this. Every fighter that wants, me and Sky talk about this, every fighter that wants to come to the UFC, I need you to go pick up, study, read, reread the Michael Chandler playbook. He came, he mm. saw, and he's got paid. Baby, it's going to be red panty night. That being said, I am so fucking excited for this fight. I cannot wait to see it happen. I can't wait to see what's going to happen on the Ultimate Fighter. Chandler's already put it out there. You talk about my wife and my kids, it's going to be <laughs> Vanderlei and Chael all over again. You know Connor's going to poke the bell. I can't let you get that close to me. Um, so I'm pumped to see how the season's going to go. I can't wait to see the actual fight. Um, whew, I'm pumped. Yeah. What do y'all got? I think they needed this because the Ultimate Fighter's been – I watch it but it's been very lackluster and kind of boring because they changed the format somehow. It's like, I think before it was the real world, world style mm-hmm. where we were seeing more in the house and seeing all the bullshit in the back end. Yeah. And now it became more like sporty. I want to see all the bullshit and the drama. Like, I'm yeah. glad they're bringing these two dudes in it because, you know, Chandler be acting all holier than now, but he be spitting his venom here and there too. He do. And then you know Connor be gonna come in with the bush, and I don't even fuck with him, but I'm excited to watch this shit. Facts, one hundred percent. Couldn't be more excited. First thing I did when I called Jace, I was like, "Listen, the best decision Michael Chandler made was to come to the UFC when he did. I mean, who has had a better transition from Bellator into the UFC? Like Jace goes, "Holy shit, I didn't even realize that Michael Chandler has lost four fights. Neither yep. did I. Neither Two and did four. you." Nor do we care. Do we care? We could care less. Every single fight he was in, it was a fight. It was exciting. Every single fight he was in, he had the opportunity to win those fights. Every single fight he was in made you feel something, made us fall more in love with Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler has came over here and did what he was supposed to do. If he never becomes champion, it doesn't matter. He gets to be on ESPN, not ESPN Plus, but on ESPN with the Conor McGregor and gets to get a fight against him. Man, after that, I'm it's a wrap. Like, mm-hmm. what belt? I got I got the I got more money. I got more money, not even going for the belt. Like, do your thing, Mike Chandler. Came over here, and this is a good testament once again to everybody. Like, you see these fighters, they're like, oh, you know, this is becoming WWE and so on and so forth. And they don't want to. They don't want to display their personalities. They, they just want to just come and fight and be a mixed martial artist. And that's cool. One is out there, PFL, Bellator, all these other places are there for you to go and just be a mar- mixed martial artist if that's what you want to do. There's no problem I'm going to say this. You can't go to one and do that because if you go to one's Instagram, the mm-hmm. girls is always doing something, dancing around. They always showing something. The one is doing it correctly. They're promoting their fighters. If yes. if you're following them, you'll yeah. see things. Yeah. They'll be like, "Oh, oh man, that's yeah. dope." These they're showing those dudes, those people's personalities. Exactly. Uh, damn, what I was about to say. Uh, Michael Chandler is one of those dudes that I didn't like before because I felt like he jumped into the UFC and got a mm-hmm. shot right away. But after right. doing all the things he was doing, I started to like him. I ain't even gonna front. I was yeah. not fucking with him. Now I'm like. Yeah. Win, lose, or draw. I'm like Chandler. You, He's you decent. You, you good on the mic. Your fights are amazing. I will fuck with you, bro. Yeah. And you know, like I was saying, like it's like a good testament to the fact that like you don't have to take the heel role, right? You don't have to be an asshole. You don't have to be mean. You don't talk about people's family. You can be just a good guy. You know. He's come in taking on like that all American dude, you mm-hmm. know. And but we like them. We like a little bit of feistiness. Like just show your fucking personalities. Like give the fans something to root for. If you just want to, like, if we don't know who, like, Islam has a backing because of Habib, and I'm sure that Russia and stuff is behind him there in Russia, whatever the case may be. But like, if you don't just pop off a little bit of something, like, I don't have nothing to root for. I don't know your story. I don't. I don't know Islam's story. I don't know how he's different from Habib or whatever the hell's going on. He's a clone. Like, Exactly, but but Michael Chandler versus um, Conor McGregor, it, it's just going to be a banger. It's going to be a banger of a fight. Uh, 
Connor's not inside the testing pool yet, so it won't be at least at the minimum September. I'm thinking, here's what I'm thinking. I think that they don't fight until November. You got to remember, this is the 30th year. November 12th is a Sunday this year. Who knows if maybe they do like a special November 12th in Madison. You know, November, we always go to Madison Square Garden. In November, Michael Chandler versus uh, Conor McGregor at New in New York. For the MSG. 30th year, yeah, MSG mm. blows the fucking roof off. Those Take numbers will go crazy. Money. Those Take numbers will money. go crazy. Those numbers will go and crazy. And stack the card up. Stack the card up. Dana, they, you know Dana ain't dumb. He gonna make that thing oh. banger, bro. Oh, it's gonna be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Selfishly, I'm hoping that it's in that it's in um Vegas. September because then it'll so. be here in Vegas and then like that's like the last card that like I told myself I want to go to because like I've been to so many cards now where I'm like I only want to go to a Conor McGregor fight just to hear and see what it feels like and then after that it's a wrap. Um, if 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 Max and Arnold Allen happen to be at the Apex, I'm thinking about asking for tickets. I don't know yet. I don't know if I can be there for that because um, it was too much for me to be there at the Yair fight. Like I was really stressed out. <laughs> hey fans, you hear? Here she go again, making us feel broke. <laughs> hey, hey! Speaking of that, like I bought cheap tickets to go see PFL. Oh, you did get them? Yes. Nice. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of like, mm, I don't know. I want to see you got Burgos. The... Yeah. Speaking of Mr. Glitch himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, you know, just real quick as well, we have. Um, Jorge Masvidal has a boxing, like pretty much MMA boxers, like all throughout there. Mm -hmm. You got Jose Aldo boxing Jeremy Stevens. You know, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> um, at the top of the card, my boy, Roy Jones Jr. versus Anthony Showtime Pettis, which I didn't even think that Pettis was like going to be into boxing and, and, and doing anything like that. Um, who else is on there? Jacare Sosa versus Vitor Belfort. That came from out of nowhere. Like, okay, yeah. y'all want to box. Paul Daly, the guy that got kicked out of the UFC, right? Mm -hmm. um, against Anthony Taylor, which you guys have been seeing Anthony Taylor pop up in, like, pretty much everything that's been going on with, like, Jake Paul. Um, yeah, and, and some more. But, like, those top four, like, that's pretty exciting. Jose Otto's fighting in three days on the 10th. Um, he'll be uh, boxing. So there's a, there's a lot of different stuff going on. Yep. Can't what wait. Do you think are, are you excited for that? Those? I'll watch I, it. Well, actually, I don't even know I what they're playing on. Actually, I, I am going to watch that because it's just it's interesting. I could care less. Really? You don't want to see Jose Auto box Jeremy Stevens? Mm, I'll catch it on a reel. Yeah. I'm not really into, I'm not really like really into MMA people trying to, to box, right? Yeah. Like it's a totally different sport. Um, just because you got hands in the UFC, like that does not matriculate over to boxing. boxing. But know? at it's least these are box. MMA fighters boxing other MMA fighters rather than, yeah. I mean, and, well, and I agree with that. Pettis is fighting um, Roy Jones, but you know, and these are pro bouts, these are not exhibitions. Yeah. Oh, wow. So Roy Jones Jr. is fighting Showtime Pettis. What he's is it? Eight rounds? Him up. Huh? Eight rounds, uh, yeah. Uh, he's gonna be Roy Jones is gonna be the brakes off Pettis. He's gonna jab his face off. Yeah. And we've already seen Pettis' sleepy face before. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, that man don't care. He getting paid seven hundred and fifty k to just show up to just show up, and he been hey. losing. <laughs> Not mad at it. Not mad at it. Get that bag. Get yeah, that bag. Get that. That's my <laughs> motto, bro. <laughs> Red penny yeah. night. Red oh, penny yeah, model. Yeah, yeah. She put the um, good ones on, the red silk <laughs> ones, you know. Shit. <laughs> Facts, but we are out of here. Another week. We showed up. Make sure that you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, yeah. And shout out to CJ MMA Casual 619. He just hit the 1000 mark on TikTok. So make sure that you go and follow him on there. Show love and support. And we will be back to discuss. 284. Oh, um, yeah, let's go. Damien will be here and we'll see. But uh, yeah, peace.